Hello, Ruben Leverage here, aka the Eco Gypsy. Welcome to the channel. Um, today's video is the second part of a video I've done recently with a Mark Goldsworthy. I had the pleasure of going over to his workshop recently, um, done a bit of an interview with him, and just had a little poke about where his, his place. And it was absolutely fascinating. A super passionate guy and very very into what he does not only does he do the wagon carving he also does sculpture um, he's a very well-known artist in our in our area and yeah just it was it was amazing as a as an insight for me to see the other side of the coin today's video is predominantly about the wagons and the wagon carving there's a hell of a lot that goes into it um, Mark was good enough to let me watch him do some carving, explaining what he was doing and showing me some of the wagons he's sort of done some work on. I find it incredibly interesting and I, you know, I've seen quite a lot of wagons and just the amount of time and effort that goes into these things and this is before they get to John for the paintwork which it, it is a whole different sort of thing but yeah so hopefully you'll find this enjoyable, give it a watch so we're just getting a bit i'm getting a bit sidetracked now with with this this big wagon that's here um really make head nor tails of it it's a big big old thing it's like a showman's wagon isn't it? on yeah. on wheels i don't know if you're going to be able to see in there with that it's got a center center fireplace because you that's go around just... to the left and you go into the master bedroom you go around to the right and there's another bedroom underneath the bed but you've got weird two bits of passageway sure this can't be original it's got to have been a, a sort of a joined up or something you know like amalgamation or something i've never seen anything like that yeah well i mean i, I, mean, I, I would have thought the fireplace was 20s yeah you know you look at that fire around and that's got to be 20s yeah yeah it's certainly a very interesting thing, isn't it? But like we were saying, you're going to need one hell of a horse to pull it. <laughs> that is a big, heavy, heavy old wagon. It's long as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I haven't seen nothing quite to that degree. These centre plates here, when they're like that, are generally showmen, aren't they? Yeah. No, it's definitely the showmen's because it's yeah. got all the belly boxes. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the steel in. That's on the way down. Yeah, there's got to be a few ton in there, and you ain't pulling that with a 13 hand cob, are you? <laughs> so, I've done a little bit on this wagon before when it was at John's, um, and you've been obviously now redoing or re um, carving the interior. Uh, how long have you been on this, Mark? It must be about a year now, off and on right yeah that i mean that again that just goes to show people what what's uh, actually it, involved or, uh, i mean i do two days on it a week yeah yeah so. but but all all this i mean the whole inside has been ripped out so yeah I've rebuilt everything yeah including the you know the cupboards down here yeah they're all new fronts yeah and then all the corner cupboards and the mantelpiece. So you, you just sit in, you just see I've got a bit there to do, a bit. it just goes on and on. Again, for me, looking at it as a layman, that I wouldn't know where to start. You're just sitting there, I, that's all a bit mind blowing, really, the amount of detail. I suppose all you can do is just keep going around until it's done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it, this this never had this these cupboards. It had a two corner cupboards that were square yeah and uh, it did have a little cupboard here but it was really roughly made right but nor asked me to make it like a, a, a proper wagon yeah yeah, so yeah, yeah. I tried to fit it in now because it's such a small wagon yeah everything has been scaled down yeah so I yeah. had to try and make it fit yeah in a smaller space them little flowers over there are nice is this the, what you've done the wagon, uh, the mirror yeah. corners for? Yeah. Yeah. So the mirror will sit in behind that space. So this, this 
come away and then the back will sit in there and then the carvings will sit right in the front yeah we'll have a look at that mirror molding in a second okay so we're on this is another bit to the wagon that we've just looked at this so this is the the bit that's going around the mirror a quarter of it a, well, a quarter of it yeah so a corner basically um again i'm going to get mark to show you how i assumed naively that you kind of just whittled away and come up with something but obviously you're going to have to you'd, you'd need a reference point so you're using these paper paper yeah. molds what i tend to do is i tend to draw everything up so uh, i mean i spent half a day designing this yeah so here's the bottom corner which that relates to so you basically draw up your design yeah and then i've done the second quarter there and then obviously when you come to do the other two you just reverse it reverse it around yeah but yeah. that gives you an idea where everything's got to go. Yeah. So I can then cut out the shape of the wood. Yeah. I can then do the setting in, which is more or less what I've done here, where you create all the different levels. Yeah. And then from this point, you do the finishing carving. You make everything relate and look real. He's making that sound really simple. But yeah. But I, I tend to draw everything out on paper yeah. first because basically I just have to fret saw the shape. So yeah. th this is a quite a simple shape, but obviously if I was following the leaves, all that has to be yes. sawn yeah, out yeah, yeah. to give you an edge to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, time wise, because this is a question I get asked most is how long do these things take, um, et cetera, et cetera. You're saying a day for the drawing then? Well, that, that drawing went. I mean, how long is a piece of string? Yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. this drawing yeah. was half a day. Yeah. So you can see I've initially had other designs. Yes. And I've rubbed it out and yeah. gone back and redone yeah. it. So that's half a day. Right. Yeah. That went well. Yeah. Some sometimes I I get given an awkward space and yeah. I just can't make something fit. Yeah. And you spend yeah, yeah. you can spend days. Yeah. Trying to redesign it so that it looks as if it should go in the space that you've been allocated that's not dissimilar to tattooing again there's a lot a lot of parallels to you know we used to draw stuff up on paper and you yeah. present it to the customer and then when it actually came to putting it on their skin it don't fit because <laughs> no. bodies aren't you know yeah. flat yeah. and, and yeah. you know and we quite often got the oh i've measured it it will fit and well, as soon well, as they move or bend or any there's any move like you were saying with the wagons there's very few old wagons that are 100 percent true they're all going to be a little bit out aren't they yeah uh the the best ones and are surprisingly accurate um a couple of the best ones have only been quarter of an inch out corner yeah. to corner yeah and that's phenomenal yeah 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 some just because of the nature of them they would aren't they you know yeah. and there's you're looking at a hundred year old anything that's going to be there's going to be some movement there obviously yeah well those old boys knew what they were doing yeah top ones yeah but um yeah what you try and do is not have any awkward bits yeah so when you get a carving if you've got something that looks awkward it jumps out yes everything yeah, has got yeah. to flow into everything else yeah so you you find the space and then you try and make everything flow yeah so that it, it's what i was saying about um punctuation mm. there shouldn't be any jerky yeah yeah yeah, yeah. phases in yeah it. yeah so easy on the eye yeah 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 so we're gonna do a but, little bit go what on. i will say this is what i do you you, you can see this uh wood i've cut that out yeah and I, what i do is i stick it to a bit of newspaper yeah then i stick it to another bit of newspaper and then i stick that to a backboard right and that enables me to screw the backboard down without damaging the carving right so when i finish the carving i can get a little uh pairing chisel between the two sheets of newspaper and i'll prise it off right and it will come away without breaking it but that does mean the way i do that it does mean i can't get below about eight mil right otherwise it just snaps yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean some of the stuff i've seen you do for john has been very very fine and in a lot of lime woods where you've yeah. done a lot of the hairs and the horses the heads and stuff like that it's um incredibly detailed and thin 
Yeah, yeah. but it, that is the limit. I, if it, it, some people are using copy carvers, where you put the whole sheet of wood on to a bed, yeah, and then you have a router come. Oh right, and yeah, you yeah, yeah. Make it much thinner that way. Yeah. That's cheating, but, though. Well, I've always done it this way. Yeah, this yeah. is the way I like, and I actually like a heavier carving. Yes. Because yeah. uh, having worked on old wagons, all the old carvings was quite deep. Yeah, yeah, for the same reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they, they were, and this was the way they did it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, so it, over there, I've got a trunk full of all the templates. Yeah. That I've ever done on all the carvings. Yeah. So I might eventually get a book out on them. Yeah. No, that'll be that'll be of interest to people, I'm sure. So, cool. We're going to watch you do a bit of carving. Yeah, you can do. Okay. Now this is the last wagon video we done, where there was a new, there was a new showman's wagon that John was painting, quite an unusual lot. This is to do with that, is it, Mark? Yeah. The, yeah. The, this is some of the moulding, decorative moulding that. It's a little bit shot, so we're going to replace that. Yeah. What I have noticed, I mean, it's quite interesting. This is a second bit. Now, you look at that, and you look at that. Apart from the size, they look fairly similar, don't yes. they? Yes. They're not. <laughs> oh, because that's got a constant yeah. figure of eight yeah. going through it, and that hasn't. Yeah, so... Ah. I'm having copied because this bit has got to replace this bit. I'm copying the bit that I've actually physically got. Yes. But I think this was done by a different carver to that because this is a little bit rougher. The carving is rougher. Yeah. Than the carving on that. Let me just see if I can get a close up of that. Because, yeah, I mean. Again. Can you see this ribbon? Yeah. And I suspect that's what that should have been done. Yeah. But whoever carved it didn't quite get it right. <laughs> and I suppose you wouldn't probably notice that it was actually on the wagon, would you? Because you've got no. to walk around both sides at the same time. No, no, time. no, you wouldn't even. Yeah. I mean, you look at that and they look the same. Yeah. So you, you won't notice that. No. But what you're I'm trying to back do, to this one? I'm, no, I'm doing this one like that one. And yeah. then the other one will be done like that one because that was what right. came to me. Right, right, right. So right, I'm yeah. reproducing what I've got given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I I haven't got access to the whole lot at the same time. So yeah. I, I, if I change it now, it might be wrong in a different way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But it's quite interesting. So it, it's how you can pick up different people's carving. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I would have thought that might have been the young lad got given this length to do. Right. Yeah. 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 I know when the coach when I've done the um videos on my old bus there was you could see they had a master craftsman down one side and his boy and a master craftsman on the other side and his boy and they used to race yeah. to get to the ends so when you strip them out and you look they're actual two completely different styles of woodwork yeah yeah, yeah. and that's why because as a commercial vehicle they done them as quick as possible and they you know the boy watched and then he done well probably usually the rest of them. you got paid per, per hour yeah yeah. So, yeah. So, the reason. And, and believe me, there's quite a few hours in a long run of this. Yes. And I should imagine the old boys got a bit bored with it. And if yeah. they had something more fancy, more engaging, they'd yeah, yeah, pass yeah. it on to yeah, the, yeah. No, fair the enough. person yeah. further down the line. Yeah, I do that myself. Right, okay. I'm going to show you how to do that. So, I've done that one, I've done that one. They haven't been sanded yet. This one is half done, but I'll start this one okay. to show you the process. Yeah. I've made a template up, and from the original, I've crossed over to give the centres. Now, they're not always equal distance, so I've ha I have to shunt them up. So you can see this one probably wants to go that way a little bit. This bit is a bit far that way, so I'll move it that way a little bit. Right. So... But this is just by... fairly much by eye, then. Well, from now, because... Yeah. yeah. The template has sort of given me roughly where it should be. So that, that can stay there. Now we'll move that across there, make that there. So this circle just has to be moved slightly across. 
there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I think that'll be fine there. So. So the chisels always give you the. I don't know whether you can see the end of that. Yeah, I can if you put it down into the camera down here. Down there. Hang on. Yeah. There's right. that one, and then the next one to that one is this one. So can you see that's slightly yeah, different yeah, yeah. curve? Yeah. So each chisel has a different curve. Yeah. So all these curves have to be cut with the rawhide shaped chisel. That's right. why you need so many chisels. Yeah. So this is what we call setting it. So you're creating your depths. Yeah. The same for stone. Same process for stone. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Because yeah. what actually makes your uh, what actually makes your stone stick out, or, or or your carving stick out, is the shadow. Yes. Yeah. It's not the high boy. It's the shadow around it. Yes. So this is pine, southern yellow pine, which is quite soft. Is there a reason for that? Well, there's. So see, hard... there's a lot of hardwood in the other, the other one. Well, the that that, that was asked for, but I don't tend to carve it because it it runs quite badly. Right. This southern yellow pine doesn't have many knots in uh -huh. and uh, it will hold uh, carving quite well so I have to be careful here that you don't run the chisel and just knock the top of that off I'm gonna ask a stupid question but I'll one Go on. <laughs> you hit the wrong bit what ends up happening then? You have to join up or you what? start again. So you say, say for argument's sake, you you slipped and knocked the middle out of that. You ain't got a lot of, what I mean is you've not got a lot of, no, you, you ain't you, got a lot of leeway there, have no, you? No, you can recess it slightly and disguise it. Yeah. But you, if it's too bad, you, you just have to, well, either glue a bit in. Yeah. And redo it. And that ain't gonna go down well with John. He don't like he don't like filler, does he? No. He's not no, keen. but uh, what what you can do is you can mortise a bit out. Yeah, I see, yeah. And yeah. glue uh, uh, a bit of wooden wedge in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'd have hardly any join, but yeah. it's a bit of a faff. Yeah. So we'd Best just try right not to do it. <laughs> yeah. I could see I'd be done a lot of gluing in if that was me. Occasionally you get a fault in the wood and it, 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 for whatever reason there's a... Um, so you, you use... This, this hand is for giving you your power and this hand is for restraining. Yeah. So I'm pushing with that and I'm pulling back with that. So yeah. all the time your two hands are working in opposition. Uh-huh. So that stops you running because if you push and carry on going that will going to pop off the only sort of wagon carver i've really took any notice of is um oh i can't remember his name he used to carve the stanley knife uh john pocket. the john pocket john pocket or john pickett there's john two. pickett yeah i think john yeah. pickett who used to carve the stanley knife and I found that amazing because obviously that's a pretty brutal tool, isn't it, for wood yeah. carving? Yeah. Some of the stuff he's managed to do with that was quite. Oh, it's, yeah, amazing. But he was using a lot of mahogany, wasn't he? Which is yeah. very easy, soft to carve. Yeah. But it's not particularly durable. Really? I thought that being a hardwood, that would be the, the way to go. No, uh, it's okay if it's dry. If yeah, it gets wet. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know it that goes quite the, quickly. I know that with the uh, railway carriage that 
I was lucky that when I got that, it was inside the building, so it was dry. But I looked at other ones, which have had as like sponges are just so yeah. sucked Once up. Once they and, get wet, and then when they dry out, they just fall to pieces. Yeah. So. Okay. We're setting in edges. And the reason I use a carver's mat, that can you see the it's round? Yeah. Is you never miss. If you had a square face mallet, because you're not looking at the mallet, if you miss and you didn't catch it square on, you'd mallet right, would yeah, go. That makes sense, yeah. Off. So change to a different shape. In. So I'll just check the shape. Be... I see, so it's actually a negative, there's a negative again, that you're, you're carving out the, yeah. the, op, the, the negative so, space. Yeah, so once you start, it starts coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about shadow. Yeah. The shadow is what gives form. If you've got no shadow, nothing stands out. Yeah. No, that makes that saying seeing it being done, I can see exactly what you mean now. Now you also have to be aware of where the uh, grain is going. So like here, you you're trying to cut out a triangular chip. Yeah. So you've got to go vertically along that edge, vertically along that edge, and then at an angle there. Right. But you want to cut it out as cleanly as possible because that saves you time later. Yeah. And I tend to hold back from the true edge, just so it gives me a little wriggle room if something happens. Yeah. So you can see why it's so slow. It's um, absolutely nuts really to see. I mean, okay, I think anyone anyone watching this is just going to hit the amount of time to do them rails. But I guess that's why that's dem they demand that's they demand the prices they are and. They are what they are because if everyone, if that was easy to do, and then everyone would be doing it, and there would be no value in them. Well, you, when you think, when these wagons were done, these old wagons, the UK was the centre of the world. Yeah. And the richest place on earth, so they could afford to spend the money. Because some people were very wealthy. I think the Mona Lisa, I think I was told that was the cost, when that was built, that cost the equivalent of six terrace houses. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah. that now? That's a lot of money. Yeah. Do you do what John does then? You sort of go from bit to bit. You wouldn't sit on this all day. I, I'd probably do a good five, six hours. Yeah. Um, I'll, you have to watch it because once you start losing concentration, yeah, that's when you can screw it up. And when you've got so much to do, yeah, you don't want to 
wreck it for the sake of pushing that extra two hours. Yeah. And there's always something else that can be done. I think we proved that with the with the amount of stuff you've got here. That was quite uh yeah, it's quite an insight. So can you see you've yeah. got a really sharp edge now? Look at the bit, this groove. Yeah. That now enables me to cut, cut that groove out. Normally I'd come where you are just to do that, but I'll do it this way. So we've got that bit. Yeah. And so you're always taking out a, a chip, a triangular chip. Yeah. The nearest fraction to give it some shape at mm -hmm. the edge. When you come to sand it, it will soften everything. Yeah. But if you leave it like that, it's a little bit too harsh. Just a bit more there. And then you want... So then you're sanding as well on top of this as well aren't you yeah and this is before any of the painting obviously so again well it'll, the... it'll probably have a, a light sanding after it's had its primer coat yeah because what that tends to do I'll, I'll i'll sand it with an 80 grit i don't tend to go beyond that because when you put paint on it the grain gets raised yes yeah so it's got to be sanded again anyway yeah comes in. What's that called? A V gouge. It's oh right, yeah, yeah. Name. Any preference on the types of chisels or you just had them forever or I tend to favour Henry Taylor because it's a softer steel so if you do hit anything it doesn't take so long to get the edge back. Right. Some steels are harder. Yeah. And you're right while well, they got their edge, but once they've lost their edge, yeah. They're a little bit so 
uh, harder to get back. Yeah. So you can see there's a lot of tidying up to do, but that's the basically wow, the basic yeah. shape. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll just go over just tidying up little bits. You can see where you've got a, a ridge. I'll just soften that. So you look at that's over half an hour for each one. Yeah. Wow. But what you don't do now, you'll end up having to do with the sandpaper, which takes even longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I that's like a lot of it is prepping, isn't it? If your prep's good and then And then I've got to do these bits in here. Yeah. So once I've tidied these ends up here, it's got to have a circle there. Put Same in. as yeah. uh, that one. And then you come down there. So if I get that bit. So from here, that goes round to there. Go from there. What you've got to be aware of is John's got to get a, a line in there. Yeah. So I can't squeeze it too tight. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise he'll be swearing. Yeah. So I carve to the line. It runs out there, but it's quite deeper this end. So I don't want to go that way, I want to come this way. Yeah, I so say since these, again, negative spaces and that's leaving enough room. Yeah. This is going to be quite interesting to put, what now we're doing the wagon videos, I think it's going to give people like, a little bit of insight to the what they're looking at a bit more as well, because obviously you, when it's all done and painted over and it's got 20 coats of paint on it, well, you don't see... Quite the I always the moan it's the painter that gets all the accolade. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Carver. Yeah. He's half done the job. My mate never gets noticed. Yeah, I call my mate he's the painter and decorator and he's the uh his housewife's favourite I call him because he turns up after they've had builders and plasterers and everyone smashing the house to bits, he yeah. turns up and Makes sweeps it. up, yeah. puts some paint on and they all love him, so yeah. So you see, yeah. that's now raised. So we want that circle there. It's that one. So again, the shape dictates the chisel. Mm -hmm. So when these people ask for these tiny little additions to be added to their wagon, they're not quite, quite um, sure, are they? Have it, quite how long these things take? Just if, if they say, "Oh, can I have another two or three rails put on there?" They, you're looking at another three or four weeks worth of work yeah. plus the painting time, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I, uh, it's all right as long as you're not in a hurry, or. Um, Wanting to cut corners. Yeah. And that goes back to what we were saying previously is you're now at a stage of your career and John's at a stage of his career that you're not having to take that sort of work, are you? No. Of people who haven't really got the knowledge or the money or they ain't really got they want you to make a make a crap wagon into something 
something awesome. That you know. No, I, I think John's I, thinned that them sort of people out, hasn't he? And well, has, I, I'm. Has I'm a view. Well, you can see I've got so much on. Yeah. I'll never get everything finished in a lifetime. No. Why would you take something on that you're not interested in doing? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a nice that's a nice way to be because you need to keep to, in order to keep that passion going. You need to be doing stuff that's inspiring you, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the way I look at it is I'm on the last stretch. Yeah. I might have another twenty years of work, which would be good. Yeah. But I might not. Yeah. So why would I want to spend that time? Yeah. Doing something I don't want to do. No, exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm much the same now. Most, you know, I'd rather do it for nothing and enjoy doing it than doing it yeah. for the money, and I that craze me. So. And it cuts nicely. It cuts nicely. Mm. When it rags, it's bloody horrible. Wow. So. Easy as that. Easy. I, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I mean, the light's going a little bit, but I'll go back and tidy that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that basically is the principles of doing it. I think you made that look quite easy, Mark. To be fair, I don't. I think for anyone else attempting that wouldn't be quite such a straightforward process. But yeah, I mean, that's fantastic to get that insight and to see quite was. See, once you start. Just softens it yeah. down a little bit more. And you, you just keep you spend hours. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, mach machine, what do you use a lot of machines? Or is it all not 99% hand? On the carbon? On the carbon side of it. Uh, the only thing on the carving side. I mean, obviously, I've used the rip saw to take the wood down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thickness to thickness it, and then yeah. I've used a hand plane to shape it. Yeah. To give it that curve. Oh right. So that's all done with a hand plane. Oh okay. So that that that's before we get to the carbon. Yeah, yeah. Right. Jesus. Okay. And then I'll just use hand tools. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, there aren't any machines that can get in all these. No, bitch. You've no, got no, to do no. it by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I assumed that. I was just, yeah. I didn't realise the actual piece of wood's already been pre-shaped. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. So, to get that, you can, if you look at the end, you can see where I've gone down with the plane. But yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. haven't bothered to make it too smooth because it's obviously going to be sanded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm cutting most of it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But rough shape it is just use a little hand plane to. Yeah. Wow. Take up the shape. I'm. <laughs> If you were doing masses of it, yeah, you'd probably get a spindle moulder, yeah, buy the cutters to shape it, yeah, and then you can put loads of it through. But mm. machines only speed things up when you've got mass production. Yeah, I've only got two runs. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the I'll time taken point. to do the machine, it's easier to just pick up the plane and yeah. do it by hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's what you always got to be aware of when you're doing bespoke stuff yeah you aren't doing quantities enough to mechanize yes no 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 and again in my mind and i know there's a bit as this this is a funny thing with with a lot of the travelers is i like sometimes where well, there's there's slight differences in carbon and slight differences in paint and you know and them little details makes it look like it's got the age if it's yes. absolutely done so every conceivable millimeter is done precisely in in every way to me and it's, again it's my taste but i personally like the sort of simpler style where it's a bit more honest yeah no well i, I tend to find that if things look too perfect yeah they look wrong yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean if you get everything that's machined out and it all looks the same. It just looks too perfect. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. look right. Yeah, Our yeah. eyes have become so accustomed to little discrepancies. Yes. That it looks unreal in a way if it's too perfect. Mm. Mm. It's, it's like, you, you know, you get furniture makers that do these lovely, marvellous cupboards out of wood. 
that are so square, perfect, and shiny, they don't look as if they're made out of wood. Yeah. And I can't understand yeah. why you'd do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, right. that is fantastic. Make a cup of tea. We're going to make a cup of tea. tea. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks a lot. Take care. And um, cheers to the insight, Mark. All right, brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs>